Hi there, I thought this video might come in handy for people having old classic cars. This is my Triumph Stag, I've done a few modifications to, had it for years, forget how many, 15 years at least. And one of the important modifications was to raise and increase the size of the coolant expansion tank. Uh, the original one was right down there, uh, lower than the water level in the engine, and as a result, uh, if you've got any air leaks in the pipes, then you can get air sucked back into the engine, uh, which can lead to overheating. So it's very important, I believe, to have a raised expansion tank. And uh, this probably applies to a lot of old classic cars. Certainly the Triumphs, where it's quite common to have the expansion tank in that sort of position quite low down. Some people have made up custom tanks made out of stainless steel, uh, but I don't particularly like those because you can't actually directly see the water level just looking at it, whereas with the plastic ones, like uh, modern cars, you can just look at the side and see the water level. So um, I was changing, uh, I've got to change this one because a uh, pipe snapped off there. I think I actually bought it with a crack in it and I just glued it 20 years ago or 15 years ago or so. And it finally gave out and started seeping a little bit, touched it and it broke off. Uh, the metal actually inside the plastic fractured. And um, I had a vague memory I got it from a scrapyard from a Vauxhall Astra. So I had a hunt round on eBay on the internet and lo and behold, found exactly the right model. So this might be useful for other people wanting to improve the expansion tank in their classic car, in particular the Stag. So this is from around about 90, I think 1991 up till over 2000, year 2000. It was used in the Opel and Vauxhall Astra. 2 litre petrol, 1.7 diesel, and the part number I'll put, and links to it on eBay I'll put in the video description section, so I'll look out for that. Uh, very cheap to buy, brand new, uh, this was £18.79 or something, and I've seen them as low as £15 on eBay, up to about 24 so very, very cheap to buy. And uh, nice new one, uh, as you can see, you will be able to easily see the water level, this is the level it should be with an arrow on it, so you don't forget where the level should be. Lots of room for expansion. Initially, I thought it was a little bit odd that the cap is lower than the top of the tank. But it sort of makes sense because you always want to have some air in the tank to allow for um, water expansion and to allow for the pressure to be fairly sort of constant as the air is just slightly compressed as the engine heats up and the water expands. Um, you always want to have some air, I think. Otherwise it goes right up to the pressure limit of the cap and then ultimately has to blow it out of the cap everywhere. Uh, there are similar tanks with this cap in this position I've seen on eBay. Again, have a look at the links in the video description section. Um, this one's quite, this tank is quite a nice size and fairly easy to fit because um, one of the good things it has these mounting, this mounting bracket here. Another one around the side here and made a little piece of u-shaped metal bracket you can just about see there that one end there's the bolt there one end bolts onto the mounting point for the wiper motor and the other end just but nut and bolt to hold the tank and that is very steady that's not moving anywhere and indeed hasn't moved for decades um, so this one, I didn't bother mounting anywhere, but I did put a bit tough cable tie on it just to sort of pull it in. Um, but that's more than sufficient. Yeah, it may not be professional having a cable tie. Some people sometimes moan about, but if it does the job, why not? And it's lasted. That's the important thing. If it lasts, it's a professional fix, even if it doesn't look particularly pretty. Um, so what else can we describe about this? Dead easy to change this, dead easy to change this over. Um, this particular design comes with three pipes, so one at the bottom for allowing the main filled water to go into the engine and for probably for circulation reasons as well. Um, what is important to get air out of the engine, so you want to tap in to the highest point on the engine. So conveniently, this is the, uh, the only place I can get to, so I use the plumbing fitting. Um, have an experiment with what plumbing works for you. It's probably a something like a 28 mil to 20 28 mil either side t-junction with maybe a 22 mil 
uh, on that end certainly reduced uh, it looks like it's got some sort of maybe reduction on there so I can't remember what I used on there but whatever you've got will be handy uh, this looks like a 22 mil T junction with a couple of bits of rubber just to reduce it down to the pipes that I had handy and it needs to be this little diameter to go onto this pipe at the side and a smaller one for this pipe which I think probably is the original pipe that goes to the top of the radiator just in case you get air on the top of the radiator then the air comes out goes into the expansion bottle and similarly here make sure this T point is pointing up so any air traveling along here or coming around here and hopefully come up to here uh, preferably you want to keep this pipe at a fairly uh, steady incline so the air goes all the way up again into the expansion bottle and all of the air in the engine is here rather than the radiator or at the top of the engine on the water pump where you definitely don't want it because the water pump will cavitate and just a reminder the water pump on this engine is under that cover just where I'm pointing there so uh, yeah that's the gist of uh, this video really um, if you want a nice convenient water tank uh, then uh, that's that's a good one to buy off eBay. Dirt cheap and um, fairly easy to fix, I think. This applies to quite a lot of different classic cars, uh, or even modern cars, I suppose, if they're not designed correctly. Um, and also have a look around on eBay because you can get expansion bottles that have a level sensor in them. Uh, I've got another video, quite a few videos actually, on replacing water tanks and putting level sensors in them. The best one, which I've used a couple of times, is this one from VW Tiguan and a few other VWs. Uh, it's easy to recognize. Uh, it's quite easy to mount because there's these uh, things obviously in the original clip onto various pipes, but you can cable tie those to various bits of your engine. Again, this is steady enough. And uh, again, people have moaned about having cable ties, but as long as it's secure, no worries. And uh, yeah, the nice one about this one is it's a very low torque uh, cap fitting because it's got rubber seals or a rubber o-ring in the top just show that which yeah it's in yeah basically this part of the cap is a little rubber o-ring there which seals in there so it doesn't have to be done up mega tight for it to water seal so even those are weak hands can undo that don't need to tighten up mega tight and it comes with uh this is a connection for two prongs that go into the tank, go nearly to the bottom of the tank, and you wire those two wires up to a little electronic unit you can buy. So this thing here, I've got another one, I've already done this on another Freelander, and there's a whole video on wiring it up and making it work. I uh, bought another electronic unit to wire up to this one, I haven't got around to doing it yet. But these two prongs on it connect to these two wires, and it just needs uh, 12 volt power. I need a little light or a buzzer or something to indicate if your water's ever low. And the nice thing about that electronic unit is that it has some filtering, some time-based filtering on the signal so you don't get false alarms, but it also responds in a reasonable time when you run out of water, uh, which would be um, a very important alarm because you probably want to stop and investigate the reason, like a burst pipe or something. Uh, so I'll just show you quickly after it's replaced, but it's uh, pretty easy to do and at the same time eventually I'll get around to changing the coolant as well. Bought some new coolant for that. Uh, it does occur to me there's two ways of doing that. You can either disconnect the bottom radiator pipe, which is just about down where I'm pointing. Let me see, about there. Can't see it very well because it's not focused. Uh, zoom in, there we go. So that's the bottom radiator hose, that's got to go. uh, which is pretty easy to get to from underneath the car. Just wiggle it off, put the bucket underneath, drain it, then refill it. You want to refill it at this position here, undo that nut. Um, you could refill it from here, I suppose, with this new configuration, but you certainly couldn't refill the engine in the original configuration with the expansion tank down the bottom there. Funny enough, on my old Triumph Dolomite Sprint, when it overheated, and an RAC man came to me while I was refilling the engine into the radiator and he was quite insistent you should be able to refill the engine by filling an expansion tank that's down in this low position. He seemed to think the water would travel 
back uphill and uh, haven't had any confidence in REC repairmen since. I'm sure there were some good ones out there, so uh, it's not a general complaint against them, it's just an observation on that particular person, quite amusing. And there we are with the new tank fitted. So super easy to see the level there. And uh, all I've got to do now is run it up, check that all of the air is expunged from the system. I actually filled it up from here till the water started coming out here, but probably there's a few air bubbles somewhere. Um, but we'll check it after we run it up. Uh, the other thing worth mentioning, I did uh, suck out and refill uh, at least the radiator part of the uh, cooling system. Uh, difficult to get out of the engine with the thermostat being shut, so probably a lot of old stuff in there. But it's good to refresh the coolant. There was about six litres or something came out of, I believe, when I looked up, it was about 18 litre total capacity. Quite a lot, actually. Some people say they can't get that amount out or in, but I guess a lot sits in the bottom of the block. To do it thoroughly, you'd have to take some of the block core plugs out which I can't remember where they are. Probably did uh, when I rebuilt the engine at some point. And um, I just bought the tanks already out of the cap because you'll have to buy the cap to go with it. And again, eBay or Amazon is your friend there. And again, I'll try and find links for those. Or you buy the tank with the cap. Uh, I think the pressure on these is pretty normal. Uh, what is that? It's not the same on there, I think. I think 140, I'll look up the units later. Kilopascals or something, I'm not sure. Um, normally something like uh, 20 PSR or something, but I'll look that up later, so I think it's that critical. And certainly it's been fine with that sort of cap on it uh, for many, many years. One more thing, when I did fill it up with new uh, coolant, I used the OAT, salt of ethyl glycol stuff. Um, it's not the original coolant that was in these engines because uh, the OAT type of antifreeze didn't exist in those days, which is why they tended to have their radiators clog up as the iron reacted with the aluminium heads of these engines. The OAT specifically uh, is meant to prevent that reaction between aluminium and iron, I believe. And so I thought, yeah, it seems a good idea for this engine and it's been fine ever since I used it many, many years ago. Uh, so that's what I use. So it's the pink antifreeze, OAT, organic acid technology, is the thing to look for. Never overheats this engine. Um, it hasn't uh, hasn't got the original fan, so I took the fan off, and instead, uh, again from a scrapyard, it's got some uh, fans on the other side of the radiator. Two speed fans, I think, came from a Volvo 340 from a scrapyard at one time and I put on an electronic thermostatic uh, control on it. So uh, there's a little sensor, which you'll probably see. It is yep, stuck onto the radiator there, covered with a bit of hybrid polymer sealant. Goes off to the little electronic circuit that I designed and um, controls both of the speeds, so two of the speeds of the fan. So at normal temperatures, just a single speed comes on which is all I ever hear working. If it ever did get too hot, then the very powerful second speed will kick in at a higher temperature. And as I say, I've been on the way, uh, well, I've been on some long trips around Europe and other places, and it's never overheated in traffic or anything. When I mixed up the coolant, I happened to have some deionized or distilled water that I stored up from a dehumidifier. I used to use dehumidifiers a lot because it's a good way of drying clothes in the winter and the, uh, the water tank output of the dehumidifier is all effectively distilled water, deionized water. So store that away and comes in handy for things like uh, mixing with your coolant. Right, that's finally it. Any questions, stick it in the comments and do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching, bye.